when we seek service about situations that trouble us. We, we, we often find that our higher power works through others. Thank you, Chris. He can read well. He just can't read. Okay. I know what he did. Let me do it again. Yeah, All right. Thanks, Chris. My name is James. I'm a grateful addict. Hey, James. Take my will and my life. Guide me in reco my recovery. Show me how to live. How do we begin the process of letting our higher power guide our lives? When we seek advice about situations that trouble us, we often find that our higher power works to others. When we accept that we don't have all the answers, we open ourselves to new and different options. A willingness to let go of our precon preconceived ideas and opinions opens the channel for spiritual guidance to light our way. At times we must be driven to the point of distraction before we are ready to turn difficult situations over to our higher power. Anxiously plotting, struggling, planning, worrying, none of these suffice. We can be sure that if we turn our problems over to our higher power through listening to others share their experience or in the quiet of meditation, the answers will come. There is no point in living in frantic existence. Charging through life like, it, like the house is on fire exhausts us and gets us nowhere. In the long run, no amount of manipulation on our part will change the situation. When we let go and allow ourselves access to a higher power, we will discover the best way to proceed. Rest assured, answers derived from a sound spiritual basis will be far superior to any answers we can concoct on our own. Just for today, I will let go and let my higher power guide my life. Thanks for letting me read. Thanks for reading. How much time do you clean, James? Um, going on 90 days. Let's give it to him, y'all. God bless. Um, my name is James. I'm a grateful addict. Um, I just want to touch on that because um, it's definitely uh, what's helping me succeed in my sobriety. This is, you know, this is like my third time in this house. And um, I was trying to do it by myself, you know what I mean, through the program. But I was leaving my higher power on the sideline in the means of mm -hmm. trying to control my will again. And it led me out there, you know, and... Uh, no D in your experience, every time you relapse, as long as you learn something from your relapse, it's not in vain. Mm -hmm. So um, this time around, you know, I pray, I meditate, I do my devotions, and I make sure I put God first in all my decisions. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm a happy uh, recovery addict today and not just, you know, a dry drunk. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. Thank you for saying that. Go fool, bro. Anybody else? I just wanted to Come say, on, Dean. We, we just talked about the higher power. Just before the week, uh -huh. and that's why I say things is uh, always. Uh, uh, how do you say it? things is always repetitious? Uh -huh. Because we just got to talking about that. Uh -huh. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, my son, y'all clean. Um, the March the tenth will be one year. That's hey, that's the right. y'all. Because right. I, I, right. I can't take that part. Nine months and five. Okay. All right. What's up, brother? How you doing? All right. Thank God for last night's rest this morning. Rise. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Grace is always giving me what I don't deserve. And mercy is not giving me what I do deserve. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. How everybody doing? All right. All right. All right. Always a pleasure to be back here. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be back here. Old dad, men's rap. Yesterday, when I was coming in the house, it was a football player on TV. His name is Philip Adams. And he suffered from CTE. That stands for chronic, that stands for chronic traumatic encephalopathy. <laughs> Forgive me for that speech. I'm trying to read that, you know, try to play it on my phone so we can play it so I can, because your phone will pronounce the words for you. Absolutely. Right? So chronic traumatic encephalopathy, something like that. It's a degenerative brain disease. Mm -hmm. It's when the brain has been multiple hits. He's been playing football for what, 21 years. It all started when he was at the age of seven years old, right? He played six years for the NFL. He'd been on five teams in six years. He retired 2016. And this year right here, in April, he shot six people and blew his brains out. Mm. Everybody hear that? Yeah. Will Smith was in a movie called Concussions, mm -hmm. based on a true story. Head trauma is real. And they said, and I looked up degenerative. Meaning it means that it's a, um, an irreversible progression of what organ failures, mm -hmm. right? And, and right, and it goes from like the prefrontal cortex when that's damaged, because that's your headquarters. 
When that's damaged, look out, right? Impulsiveness, explosiveness, depression, suicidal ideations, short fuse, etc. The list goes on and on and on right there, right? So I figured I'd just put that out there. If anybody hear about the football player, you know, he passed away right there. And he killed some people too. Two kids, a doctor, his wife, and himself. Mm-hmm. From the Patriots. And hung himself in jail. Yes, right. So you know that that's that, that's real right there. And, and and drugs damage our brain too. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. You get a lot of brain damage, right, from drugs, right? So so I, they say. Well, I don't know if it's, it's so severe being getting traumatized like that, but brain do attack the mind, all right? So real quick, we ain't gonna be able to go. This guy got like eleven phases of relapse. I got four up here. I think that's more than enough for an hour of of power. All right, mm-hmm. and his name is Gorski. If anybody will get on their phone, his name is Gorski. He's a psychiatrist, and he has a lot of good information on recovery and relationships, et cetera, et cetera, all right? Amen. So this is how relapse unfolds. Number one, return of denial, phase one, return of denial. Anybody hear that? Mm-hmm. Okay, under return of denial is what? Concern about my well-being. Concern about my well-being. Point two, denial of concern. All right, let's, go, let's break it down. Number one, return of denial. What are they talking about? Talking about relapse. We clean now, but we on our way back to what? Using again. Return of denial. That means I'm back around what? People, yeah. places, and things. I still think I can do what I used to do. Anybody hear that? Yeah. I can sell drugs and don't use drugs. Anybody hear that? Yeah. Or at least I used to shoot dope, let me smoke weed. I'm switching addictions. Just on Tuesday. <laughs> right. Just to be a savage within minutes. You yeah, understand what I'm saying? So, return, the return of denial. I'm still holding large sums of money. I'm holding my pain, my fears, anxieties to myself. I'm talking fruits, but I'm not talking roots. So what? It's a buildup, slowly but surely. Because the disease of addiction is insidious, cunning, baffling, progressive, and fatal. Return of denial. Under that is what? Concern about well-being. Is anybody concerned about leaving? Like my brother James was talking about, he been here three times. You know what I'm saying? And I never judge nobody who relapsed and come back. It's truly a blessing. You know why? Because he gives strength to some brothers who might be in limbo. You know what I'm saying? Because some of us as men, if we don't if we don't hear nobody talk about it, it might not be true. Or I might not believe you. But I got to see your weakness turn into what? Strength. Everybody hear that? Because a lot of men don't got faith. They give a what? Sight. If I don't see it, I don't believe it. Nope. So just shut up. You're a liar. You follow what I'm saying? But men who have faith, you follow what I'm saying? We know eventually God will reveal what that person is talking about. That's why you don't need to be no program detective in here. Because cats' actions will take their ass out the door without you catching an aneurysm or losing sleep over somebody. I have codependency at times. I got to check that. Because I want for him what I want for me. I want for y'all what I want for me. And that's to be what? Better individuals. Better men. Better brothers. Better fathers. Better husbands. Better uncles. That's what I want for me and I want for y'all. But everybody recovers in their own speed and all what? Stages and what? Phases and all that stuff. So I got to be patient and slow it down. Because everybody don't recover the way you recover. Right, yeah, exactly. Me, you suffer yeah. the same thing because yeah. I, I overdo it sometimes. I say things to people, they say, Cricket, watch how you saying it. And what I be saying was right, but the way I say it is wrong, but the concern in my heart is there yeah. for people. I don't want people to mess up. Uh-huh. I don't want people to do this and do that mm-hmm. because it's, it's fatal to them. Mm-hmm. But like you said, I have to back refrain from that mm-hmm. because people are going to do what they want to do, how they want to do it, when they want to do it, anyway. That's right. Regards to what I say. That's right. So a lot of guys mm-hmm. fault me for that in here because, but 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 it's in the right. It's for the right reason. Like your heart's in the right spot. Mm-hmm. It's definitely for the right reason. Mm-hmm. I wish the best for everybody. Mm-hmm. But a lot of guys don't see it that way mm-hmm. because it's the way we think a lot of times mm-hmm. determines how we see things. Mm-hmm. You know, if, 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 you, if, if you think a certain way, that's how you're going to see things. Mm-hmm. That's the way you think it. So I just want to put that out there that I know that my heart is in the right place when I'm explaining something to people. I'm not saying it to you to make myself look good. I'm not saying it 
the Judas or Brown little back. I'm saying it because it's a genuine concern for you. Mm -hmm. But everybody take it differently. And I, I can yeah. relate to you too, because when I was a house manager, cats didn't like me. But they said, when everybody likes you, you kiss an ass. Mm -hmm. So, but if you living for what? Recovery, living for your high power, living for the kingdom, cats is not going to like you because the flesh don't like that. Mm -hmm. But the spirit welcomes that. So we talk to the what? Spirit, mm -hmm. not the flesh. So if you if you got a brother who's living in the spirit, talking in the spirit, trying to trying to be about the spirit, the flesh, the cats who still dominated by their flesh, yep. you always going to have conflict. You feel what I'm saying? And I asked her for the rest of the show, what? And I used to be a, a house manager, 26 guys. I used to see my door unlocked. I said, I ain't locking my door. Killers in the building. Molesters, or you name it, A through Z was in the building. But my door was what? Unlocked. And I went to sleep peacefully every night because my faith was in my high power. Mm -hmm. I do home health care. I work at 32nd and what? Grace Ferry. Reed, the Reed House, Salvation Army, right? OAS, you know what they say? They say, hey, Vic, how you doing, Vic? What's going on? I'm, I'm chilling, brother. Chillin'. They say, listen, they say, say, house them, then work on their recovery. That's a negative. So you're going to give a person that's a live addict a place. And that's what's going on. They got speakeasies up there. Cats up doing, doing perks. People smoking coke. Dude next door, the, the person I do home health care, he have no legs and he's he drinking, um, uh, he used to be drinking Mad Dog 2020. Uh, and smoking coke, took him to the to the bank over there at um 38th and uh what's that thing? Walnut Street in mm. front of the in front of the teller, out his bag fell out his lap and the crap pipe fell on the floor. Mm. Madness. House them first, then work on their recovery. Mm. That's wrong. But my whole point is now, you know, I have to learn to fall back and realize that listen, seeing them takes me back. Yeah, yeah when I was active. Richard, Richard Nixon was on TV. My, the guy I take care of, all he do is watch movies. I like movies, he like movies. We have a lot in common. But he know he, he know actors by name, um, he know the years, um, off the screen, all he know he, he's deep. And uh, God put us together for a reason. Right? He's 71, he's a Jew, and his Jewish people heard him, and now he said he's he, he, he converted to a what? A, 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 a Catholic. I said, You can't do that. I don't think you can do that. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but he speak out of what? Hurt and pain. And he by himself. And he 400 pounds. Then he dropped the 388, taking him the therapy, taking him the exercise and all of that. So now he back up on his weight. So his weight is fluctuating. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the whole time is, but I thank God for him because he really helps me by me what? Helping him, right? Yeah. But return to denial. Return to denial. Everybody hear that? Yeah. How about family members? Christmas time, holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Who? Listen, I'm not getting broke no more for no Christmas. That only lasts for one day. <laughs> and, who, and who disrespect the meaning of Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, listen, yeah. that's another story. Let's get it. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> How about concern of well being? Anybody concerned about leaving? Who think, I don't know if I'm going to stay clean once I go? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Anybody in doubt like that? Anybody in limbo? Yeah. I might get high again. When I got married and I went and got started smoking coke again. And I remember my wife, my ex wife, went to go get what? Some guys from the program from Stop and Surrender. And they came to the house. They said, yo, where the pipe at? I said, there ain't no pipe in here. Get the hell out of my house. He said, Dirt, we're not leaving until we, we, you give us the pipe. I said, there ain't no damn pipe in my house. Get out of here. You know, when you when you high, you want to get high. You got no money. Now you agitated. I'm yelling and screaming like a wild animal. And then they wasn't even moved by that. They said, where the pipe at? <laughs> where the pipe? And I went to go got it. And then I gave it to him. Then I went and got some help. You know what I'm saying? But I was always concerned about my well-being when I left the program because I knew I was going to get high because I wasn't done. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right. All right. Not done. Just speak about it. How about this right here? Denial of your concern. So now you know, I'm worried. Now I say I don't have no worries. That's a lie. Denial stands for what? Don't even know I'm lying. Anybody ever got mail at that address called denial? Anybody ever used to sleep on that street called denial? I did. Yeah. Return of the now. And we don't check this right here and that can lead us to what? To a potential relapse. Yeah. 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 Potential, uh, yeah. potential relapse. Potential relapse. All right? That the now is real, real big right there. To that self be true. All right? How about next one, y'all? Avoidance and defense behavior. Phase two. Phase one, I live in the now. Phase two, I'm avoiding you 
and I what? My, my walls is up. So I'm avoiding you and I'm protecting myself from you. Anybody in it like that? Insulated. Insulated but still in prison. Avoidance. Avoidance. All right? You speaking truth? I don't want to hear that. You talking about recovery? Don't want to hear that. You talking about being a better man? Don't want to hear that. You talking about some of my character defects? I don't want to hear that. All right? I'm avoiding. But the, to watch the football game, the TV, stuff like that, I'm with that. But you start talking about recovery, my volume on my life goes down. Anybody hear that? But to talk about what? Foolishness, insignificant talk, my volume goes up. So to die in silence. To die in silence. Believe it, I never use again. Anybody ever said that? Yeah. I never use again. What happened? Yeah. Some people say, I don't count my clean time. You think that's a reason why, too? Yeah, I don't. I'm not clean yet. Oh, you gonna cut methadone? Yeah. Some people say that. They said, I don't count my clean time. Right? Because if I count it the last time I got high and they put glass ceilings on their lives. I always relapse when I had two months. You can't do it. Just for the day. With the days you got. Just yeah. for the day. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They say black men only last live no long, no past 21 years old. When I was 20, I was nervous. <laughs> yeah. I said, I'm about to die. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and live way past that. Doctors tell people, listen, you got six months to live. Some patients, some patients outlive the doctors. Yeah. Who's your faith in? God. That's right, yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah come on. We listen. I, I, I know one thing now. Uh -huh. Is that being overwhelmed mm -hmm. has always made me use again. Mm -hmm. That's why I know now. Don't rush to do nothing. Don't rush to leave here mm -hmm. until you get yeah. what you came here. That's right. Don't rush to get the house. Mm -hmm. Because I know that if I'm doing right, those things will be added. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be in no hurry to get some money and roll out yeah. the door mm -hmm. like I've always done. As mm -hmm. soon as I get some money, as soon as everything starts happening good, I get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. There's too much going on. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, there's nothing broke. And I'm still trying to fix something. Mm -hmm. No, sit still. Mm -hmm. That's why I always share about that. Sit still. Be patient. Mm -hmm. Sit still long enough to grab something, mm -hmm. to get something up here. Mm -hmm. And don't be so quick to run. Because mm -hmm. that's been my yeah. problem throughout my day. Anybody hear that? That's yeah. a good fool. Yeah. It's a friend of mine. Yeah. He used to be in his program. He left and got high. Went into another program, self help on the boulevard. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Slow down, Dirk. He was at Keystone, out Chester. Mm -hmm. We used to do groups out there on Sundays. Mm -hmm. I seen him. I said, how you doing? You look good, brother. Good to see you. You know what I'm saying? God is good, man. Listen, keep working that program. Stay focused. You know what I'm saying? Don't get distracted. Stay strong. Encouragement. And then when I came back the next week, I saw him sitting by a big girl. That's his M.O. Avoid himself and hide behind everybody else. So he picked the weakest woman with the lowest self-esteem. Get connected to that individual. She leaves, he leaves. By that time, he go to self-help on the boulevard. So when she go home, he leaves there, he go see her house. He stay at her house for a while, then he go back there. Then he got tired of the journey from her house to self-help, completes the program, first floor or second floor. He leaves there and go stays with her. After the honeymoon is over, she said, I don't want your ass in my house no more. And that right there overwhelmed, mm -hmm. he wind up using again. His sister said, listen, I heard her say, bring me, bring me a beer. So she relapsed also. Mm -hmm. Two addicts ain't working on nothing equals what? Nothing. A bag of dope. Yeah. Yeah. And some perks. Mm -hmm. in, in a tent. Uh, let's, let's keep moving. But believe, yeah. it, I, <laughs> believe it, I'll never what? Use again. But I have to see that to remind me. When I did what? Mm -hmm. I did what? Slow down. Okay. Patience is important. Yeah. Patience is what a comedian needs. Two comedians can tell the same joke. But if you rush the joke and have no patience to deliver the joke, you kill the joke. Yeah. Patience is what a farmer needs. A farmer, a farmer, he cultivates the land, he drops the seeds, and he waits patiently for the harvest. Mm -hmm. Patience is what parents need when a yeah. child is ADHD. Hey. <laughs> patience is really important. Yeah, you yeah, lose yeah. patience, become impatient. Those yeah. who've been locked up, you know about patience. Yeah, you do. For those who've been to what? Pinned out at the 10 o'clock, you know about patience. <laughs> Anybody hear that? Ready for what? Independence, but I'm not ready. But I need to stay with what? Dependence. Yeah. 
Because dependence prepares us for what? Independence. Mm -hmm. Believe it, I never use it again. All right? I used to say that. I stopped saying like, like James said, just for the day. I had no desires to what? Use. I don't project long distance. I stay right into the day. How about point two? Worrying about others instead of yourself. <laughs> My man was just talking about how his lady tried to change him. And driving him crazy. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? So for some women think that's a task to change. They got their tool belt kit on and all of that. I'm going to change him. All you need is something to eat. Some extra sex and all of that. But nah. You know what I'm saying? And when you, she, thinks, she thinks you're dealing with a boy when you're dealing with a man. You know what I'm saying? So she got a what? Like my, my father. My father used to say, Dirk, pull your pants up. Dirk, you're going to die early. Dirk, I'm tired of your mother crying. Dirk, listen, you need to go to the army. Dirk, you need to go to the Marines. Dirk, you, I'm going to kill your ass if you don't change. Now my father used to tell me. But when I did change, not for him, but for what? God. Right. Yeah. And when I changed for what? Just to be a better individual, then his speech changed. Okay. Anybody catch that? Because my pop couldn't change me. I had to have my high power change me. And that's what she got to find out too. And you never miss it towards what? Gone. Yeah. That's big right there. I thought I could change a woman. Yell, holler, scream, grab you, hit you and all that. No. She, wanted, she don't want you no more. Listen. It's a funeral time. Time for divorce. But still be her friend. Uh, let's keep moving. How about this right here? A defensive. Anybody defensive? Defensive. I am retired. Yeah. Defensive. I used to be retired. very defensive. Defensive. I yeah. used to know how to shut them down. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, really. I used to like shut them down. I didn't get. I make them feel. And they in turn will bring their negativeness toward me mm -hmm. about the way I am. Mm -hmm. I would throw it right back mm -hmm. in a kind way. I throw it right back. It's so smooth. And so right back, they would be like, their head would be down. Like, damn, did he really say that? Mm -hmm. You know, and. And all that was was my addiction, trying to protect my addiction, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. by saying you know, cruel and hurtful things to people, you know, it's like, and they're making them think twice about, well, damn, well, everything he is saying is true. It's like, um, I used to have a, a, a saying when they were like, oh, you, all you want to do is get high. It's like, I used to tell them, uh, it's like, you ever been to a funeral? Have you ever seen two people in a coffin? Anyway, what? Two people in a coffin? They look at me like I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. I said, what that means, it's my life, you know. I said, you're not going there with me, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I said, you're not going there with me. There's only one coffin up there, and that's mine, and I made that decision. And, that, you know, what I do doesn't concern you. And mm -hmm. I used to shut people down hard, mm -hmm. you know, and then they would, like, you know, I, I wouldn't, like, curse them out or anything like that. It's like, you know, I'm three times your age, and you're telling me how to live. You know, it's like, you know, I'm still here. You're just trying to get to where I'm at. Okay. You know, say I used to say crazy stuff like that to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized all that was me protecting my addiction, mm -hmm. you know, thinking I had a grip on it. Like, I can handle this. You can't. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I, I still work. I, I'm not... You know, I'm not beating nobody over the head. I'm not sticking nobody up. I'm not lurking in the alley waiting to rob somebody. You know, but I said, I supply my own habit. So I should be able, if I want to do this, let me do this, mm -hmm. you know. And it was like crazy thinking that way. I had to change everything up here. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to be in denial like crazy. No, mm -hmm. I'm not nowhere. No, I'm, you know, it was, uh, it took me, uh, you know, I had to take a good look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I used to, I used to hate mirrors. I used to hate those big glasses you walk past. I yeah. And I would never look there because Vampire. I didn't want to see that guy. You know, it was like, yeah, it was like, who's that monster? You know, it's like, no. Mm -hmm. But uh, now I, I learned to love me and, um, you know, and, the most important thing I know about this recovery is you cannot rush it. You got to be patient. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in a position where I could just get up and go, but I'm not going nowhere okay. because I still feel I'm broken. I'm like, you know, I come from a long history of drugs. I'm talking about since I'm 17 and I'm 66 now. Yeah. You know, that was like damn near 50 years. 
Mm -hmm. This drug, that drug, you know, little recovery time, that, you know, it's like, I'm supposed to be recovered from that in a few months? Nah, that ain't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. You know, this is gonna take me the rest of my life. I'm broken and, you know, I'm just putting mm -hmm. a piece here together this piece, that piece, I'm starting to put it all together now, mm -hmm. you know, and things are starting to go my way and things like that, but, you know, it's like, I got a long way to go, so I'm going to be in this recovery process for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. and I accept that, mm -hmm. I accept that, that, that that's the way it has to be, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, and I know it's out there, it's mm -hmm. so much temptation is out there, every time I see a girl with a bad ass or, or, or some, some shit like that, it's like, it always takes me back to, like, damn, I wish, no, nah, you know, you have to change everything about you. You have to change your thought process. Mm -hmm. The way you look at people, you have to start respecting people. You got to respect yourself first. Mm -hmm. Some of the things I used to do, I'll go and, 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 and say uh, slick stuff, to, I don't do that no more. It's like I have to change everything about me because the old me was like a monster, you know, riding and when I had my car. You know, I used to have a fly ass car. I'm riding down, you know, it's like, I, I just park my car and, and people come up and like, whose fucking car is this? Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say nothing about the bottom. I'd be sitting on it. I said, you see, he was sitting on it, right? So it's like, no, I used to take, take advantage of people, you know, oh, he, I know he must have some money and shit. Like he riding in this here, you know, but I don't, I don't take those things for granted now. You know, it's like, uh, uh, I got a new thought process, and uh, this place has helped me a lot. It has. It's like I know, I know, crazy stuff be going on around here, but I keep myself away from it. You know, mm -hmm. I just, I just pray for the people that come through these doors that they go out that door. You know, because once you leave out that orange door and you hit that street, that's the real world. You know, shit is gonna come at you a hundred miles an hour. And you have to make the right thought process. You know, it's like, oh, everywhere you go, you see beer stores, state stores, people on the corner. You know, you know, you see five, six dudes on the corner. You know what's up. Mm -hmm. You know, so you just, you got to just be like a, in a horse race. You got to put on blinders mm -hmm. and stay focused mm -hmm. on your recovery. And that's what you got to do. It's like. Uh, you know, that. and that's that's how it is. And mm -hmm. you know, I know that's how it's gonna be. And I know it's not gonna be easy, but I'm a, I'm willing to do it. Okay. I'm willing to get. I gave this shit up. It's like I'm not trying to go that route no more. First of all, I'm tired of the fucking paranoia using coke. Is, that's like one of the most paranoid fucking drugs you can ever use. Mm -hmm. You take everybody at the door listening and shit. Ain't nothing outside that damn door. You know. Oh, shh, be quiet. You know, I think the cops are coming. Oh, that, cra that craziness. You know, it's like, no, it's crazy. You know, it's like, I, I don't want to go through that no more. You know, it's just simple shit like that. It's just like, I'm just tired of it. You know, it's crazy. You know, worrying about every time I see a cop, I'm watching every move he makes. It's like, oh, is he, is he coming to get me or something? You know, it's crazy. You got to live like that. I'm, I'm tired of living like that. Yeah. How much time you got clean now? Uh, going on eight months. Hey, hey all right, right. all good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Go food, brother. Thanks for saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Defensiveness, all right? Defensiveness. Anybody remember the Sopranos? I love the Sopranos. Yeah. Remember Christopher was shooting dope, and they had an intervention, right? And and everybody was going around the table how Christopher heard every heard everybody. And and then um, um they went to the hospital. One saying they went to the hospital. Then and, and, and um Tony told Christopher. He said, "Listen, you lucky, you my nephew, because you would have had an intervention to the back of your brain. I mean, it would have been lights out for you, right? Mm -hmm. But he got a pass because he was related to Tony, right? But he was real defensive when they had the what the intervention, right? Mm -hmm. Walls was up. My mother used to come to my job and say, "Listen, give me my son his checks. My son check. He get paid Friday. Don't give my son his check. Give me his check." And I used to fight the damn manager and my mom. No, that's my money. But they knew what time it was. Plus, I was living yeah. with my mom and all this. I was real defensive, right? I was trying to get help. Yeah. So I mean, I remember those days. And who want to keep going back to that? Anybody? I used to work. I remember I used to work Wendy's in Baltimore City, and I used to do drive through. And I remember, I remember they said, "Derek, your break is in five minutes." I couldn't wait the break time because I haul ass. I I would run literally from here to damn near almost Broad Street. No, I'm sorry, 
let me say, Market Street. Not that far, but maybe four blocks from Market Street. That's how far I had to go on break time. Break was only 30 minutes. My run was at least 15 minutes. There and back. I have no lungs. I had no air in my lungs by the time I get back with my drugs in the bathroom. I open up the door. I get to the bathroom. Somebody in the bathroom. Now I got five minutes before I go back to what? To work. True story. I get in there. I can't breathe. I light up the pipe. <sighs> it ain't no air here. I can't even. Now listen. Yeah. <laughs> and when I do smoke, smoke everywhere. Now I'm scared. The paranoia. Yeah, yeah. Now I put a hot pipe on my dicky pants. You know my dickies? Yeah. They had the little thing right here. Yeah. And the pipe, pipe be burning me. Burn, burn my leg. I go back to the. I go back to the line. I remember the manager was looking right at my leg, and I was just high as hell. <laughs> <laughs> And eventually got fired too, right? I lost a lot of good jobs getting high, man. Defensive. Our walls is up because don't want to be what? Checked or corrected. Yeah. All right? Or prosecuted or condemned or constructive criticism. So the walls is up to protect us from all that type of what? All that, that verbal assault we, we call it, all right? How about compulsive behavior? Who's impulsive and compulsive? <laughs> Anybody's impulsive and compulsive. Impulsive means I, I act, then I think. I shot him without all the evidence of why I shot him. Now to come to find out, I shot somebody who didn't deserve to get shot. Anybody guess that? Mm -hmm. All because of my man says, get him. But come to find out, my man was the what? The dirty one. But because I'm a gunner and I'm impulsive, I shot him. When that's your alley, I should never shot him. Impulsive. Act, then think later. Anybody like it like that? Who got married before you, you knew who the hell you was or her? I did. Who got a car before you got a home? I did. I had to learn to slow it down. I'm impulsive. I got to learn to be less impulsive. Anybody compulsive? Once it gets started, it's hard to stop. Anybody ain't like that? Yeah, that's how it was in my addiction. Yes. Oh, you want to speak on that? Yeah, that's, that's just crazy, though. Yeah, like being upset. Being mad, like once I get there, I mean, it take me a minute to get there. I don't, I don't like to go there mm -hmm. because I can't stop. It. Mm -hmm. And then when I do stop, it's too late. Mm -hmm. Always, mm -hmm. it's always too late. Like I, I had thing with saying, damn, everybody get out of jail. I always gotta pay them. <laughs> that was my thing. But I do this shit to myself. Uh, you know, I just try to learn to walk away. Good. That's what you do today? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How much time you got clean? 112 days. Hey, all right. God bless. God bless. God bless. So you walk away when you see yourself getting angry. Yeah. Can you confront somebody who pissed you off instead of holding it? Or you got to wait, cool that off, then come back to them? Yeah, I have to. Then you can speak to them. Right, because more than like most people won't get defensive. Right, there you go. Back to the word defensive. Right, very good. Ain't going to get that way, and I'm going to go there with them. Uh -huh. So I got to wait to bring it down and try to bring it to them. 